Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Don't take it lying down. So in this podcast, I wanted to talk about the current climate of all kinds of things being oppressed, repressed, suppressed, which is just a more extreme degree of stuff that's going on all the time. So the whole concept here, don't take it lying down, and what are the alternative ideas in holistic sexual care? So from pelvic exams to birth control to the way that most women have been coerced into how they give birth, women have been taking it lying down for a long time. And this recent furor with the abortion debate brings this concept to light. So to be clear, I disagree with these bans. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't be doing whatever they can to stop them. But a part of me also doesn't care a lot because why? I'm not reliant on a bunch of old white guys to give me permission on what I can and can't do with my body, my sexuality, and my reproductive organs. Why are you asking old white men permission to control your bodies? Why in the fuck are you doing that? (laughs) The same debate came up years ago with the, the argument about funding birth control. This idea that the government or employers or whoever ought to pay for women's birth control. Again, why are you you begging other people for permission and the power to control your own body. Not only are you begging for permission, but why do you even want to be using birth control that is toxic and a proven carcinogen? I'm always shocked by how many people still buy into the myth that the pill and hormonal birth control is some kind of great liberator for women. Yay, now we can go out and have all the casual sex we want. <laughs> like, okay. okay, so that's up to you. But um, the point is, you can also now chemically castrate yourself and mess up your reproductive system for life. And I'm all for freedom of choice, but did you know that according to the WHO, the birth control pill and hormonal birth control are group one carcinogens. So this places them in the same category as asbestos and radium. This is especially dangerous for young women, you know, like a 14 year old girl who gets put on the pill when she isn't even sexually active, but has teenage acne. A girl slash woman under the age of 20 has a 1,000% increased risk of breast cancer if she's been on the pill. I put out a podcast a few months ago called SOS, Save Our Reproductive Organs. And this was all about the idea that Western allopathic medicine and OBGYNs in particular, and one OBGYN in particular who won the Fukme Award of that week, well, probably the whole year, you'll have to go listen to find out who that is. So that podcast is all about the topic of OBGYN scare tactics and the drive to control women's reproductive systems, making them feel they have no power. And then they succumb to draconian measures like organ removal to stop period pain. So there's been a systematic effort over the past century to remove the knowledge and care of women's bodies and particularly their reproductive organs, taking these things out of the hands of women and midwives and into the hands and wallets of doctors and hospital. So in that podcast, I reference referenced a quote from an American Dr. Hodge from 1938, and I'm going to repeat it because it's very important and relevant here. He says, in this effort to bring people to bring women into the whole like realm of OBGYN care, and here's the quote, if these facts can be substantiated, if this information can be promulgated, if females can be induced to believe that their sufferings will be diminished or shortened and that their lives and those of their offspring be safer in the hands of the profession, there will be no further difficulty in establishing the universal practice of obstetrics. All the prejudices of the most ignorant and nervous female, all the innate and acquired feelings of delicacy so characteristic of the sex will afford no obstacle to the employment of male practitioners. 
and that's the quote. So interesting where he says male practitioners. I mean, I suppose there were more male doctors being educated at that time, but it's also, I'd say, in direct reference to the fact that they're taking this knowledge or trying to divert women away from the knowledge where it's always been traditionally held, which, which is in the hands of women and midwives. And <laughs> there you have it. That quote is just an epic you know, understanding of this effort that was made. So from there on, we went from having a home birth rate in the U.S. of 99% to a complete reversal where now the home birth rate is 1%. We have a 33% C-section rate in American women and in, in some private hospitals, it goes up to 50 and even 80%. Hysterectomies and C-sections are in the 10 most common surgeries in the United States. So you're right, there is a literal attack on women's bodies. But my point is, why are you giving power to the system? I get that there are scare tactics and threats and coercion and false information. I get that. There are orchestrated smear campaigns like there were in this last century to get women into the hospitals to have their babies rather than at home with midwives. And even these days, you have these super underfucked and sexually inexperienced OBGYNs out there like Jen Gunter, Gunter, Voldemort. Okay, so she's, <laughs> I've given it away. She's the Fukme Award winner, like I said, probably of the whole year. Go back to listen to the podcast, SOS, Save Our Reproductive Organs, like, you know, bring it all to head there. So I doubt that anyone can really beat her, but her issue is she's out there trying to attack women for taking their power back and exploring natural remedies that are 100% safe. And the, the only so-called crime, I guess, according to people like her, is that this would then reduce a woman's dependence on outside sources and tragic interventions that don't work and cause even more problems than they solve, i.e., being on a lifetime of hormonal drugs and having unnecessary surgical removal of internal organs. Like that's the only remedy. And it's not even a remedy. Let's be really clear. It's the only band-aid and ridiculous thing that um, OBGYNs really have to offer. So if you are someone who willingly subjects themselves to yearly pap smears, to taking hormonal birth control, aka chemical castration, who chooses to birth their baby in a hospital in stirrups, you are consenting to the system. You may be doing this because you don't know of any other way. And the dominant messaging that you receive is to be a good little girl, go get your pap smears and your mammograms and get on the pill and get endless numbers of sonograms with your baby and have no idea why we have a skyrocketing autism right you know with all these babies born being born these days let somebody else birth your baby in a hospital with knives because you're told that you couldn't possibly know how to do that yourself do you believe that I believe and live something else I have existed outside of this system for decades and I don't buy into any of it I don't buy into allopathic medicine and it's snake oil this is the real snake oil like drugs and surgery that are just band-aids like these MLM bullshit pharmaceutical horror pyramid schemes like that's really what we're talking about those are the people who really have the mlm um can be bought for a certain price and offer no real solution so I don't get pap smears. I never see OBGYNs. My body tells me when it's fertile and when it's not, just like every other female in the animal kingdom. I don't use hospitals. I don't use doctors. This is the last place I would go for any kind of healing. Unless, I mean, look, the last place I was in the, in the time I was in the hospital, I got smacked in the head with a surfboard and had to go in for some stitches. So for real emergency type stitching back to Together, helping mend broken bones that's where they can give some assistance is in these real like emergency crisis oriented situations but not for regular health maintenance or care all of my online salons I teach in are geared to educate women and men to be in control of their health and their well-being and to be able to hear the messages that their bodies give them. This is the crux of everything that I do is to give you the tools to actually find the solutions within yourself or if they're outside of yourself is using much more gentle, holistic, actual healing methods. So you know, like when I reference allopathic methods, they don't heal. I'm like, show me one person that you actually healed. So that means not using drugs, which are a band-aid, not using surgery, which is kind of like the equivalent of saying, oh, you broke your arm, um, we'll just cut it off. Uh, you know, you've got another one, you can just use that one. You don't really need to. What? 
what are you talking about? Really? That's the best you have to offer me is you don't, you're not even going to fucking fix it. You're just going to cut. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. People do it all the time. People do it all the time. And that's the equivalent of most of what people are offered when they go to allopathic <laughs> supposed, you know, experts. So what does the opposite of all of this look like? What does it take <laughs> when you look, what does it look like when you take the reins back and instead of just lying there and taking it, you climb on top and you cowgirl that thing all the way home. Well, the first thing I would say is that you get back in touch with your sexual self. And I always say that people who are not in touch with their sexual energy are operating at a deficiency. You aren't in touch with your deepest, truest self and your system will manifest all sorts of ailments. All reproductive issues can be traced back to some kind of imbalance in your sexual energy. Do you have uncleared past sexual abuse trauma? Hello, endometriosis and too tight vagina syndrome. Do you have a hard time saying no to sex? Hello, lack of lubrication. Your vagina is going to then do it for you. Do you have a hard time occupying your masculine self? Then you'll have a hard time, okay, no pun intended, occupying your erection. It's all related. Your body is constantly constantly giving you messages. They aren't random or coincidental or unrelated to your deeper truth. They are a direct expression of it. The more you can get in touch with yourself and the more you can rely on your own intuitive and body's messages to tell you what's up, that's where your power lies. So something like the pill or hormonal birth control just silences your body. It just pretends like it puts all your hormones on hold. It doesn't balance them, which is what you might be falsely led to believe. It just cuts them off. And so your period is like your monthly report card. And I'd like to attribute this to somebody saying this, but I did an interview and she referenced it and I forget at the source, but somebody talks about this. Um, and it shows you what's up with your system. Everything from the color of your blood to the length of your cycle, and of course the severity of your cycle give you a message. In the dysfunctional world of allopathic medicine, dysfunction is normalized, meaning you're told that it's normal to have a pain, painful period, terrible PMS, and awful shriveled up menopause. But these are lies. This has become normalized, but it's normal to actually have pleasurable periods to not have all these symptoms of hormonal imbalance, like say acne or weight gain or whatever, bloating, and to have easy, um, you know, PMS, like whatever, that's just something not even noticeable, and for menopause to be this smooth, easy transition. And so these things are supposed to be natural and even pleasurable and even spiritual portals into other dimensions. So historically, in other cultures, these were looked at times very, very pivotal times for women like these shamanistic times to connect like the curtain between worlds opens up i.e your cervix opens up which is the door between life and death and you get exposed you have this sort of extra astral whatever you want to call it insight into these other planes of existence and it's only in modern times that this has been mutated into this dirty shameful thing which is really an inversion of its true power and the same thing with menopause that this this is now a time when the woman instead of focusing all of this material energy and spiritual energy on potentially making and generating new life every month. Now she has that energy available to help her catapult into higher states of spiritual awareness. So these to me are much more empowering definitions. And we're not, I, mean, I have to always make this disclaimer because of the climate that we're living in right now. None of these things are meant to shame people. By me saying that it's normal to have a pleasurable period, I'm not shaming anyone for not having it. I'm telling you that we live in a culture that's normalizing dysfunction. And so instead of just like masking those symptoms with band-aids, I'm saying let's get to the root cause and actually solve them. And I do that in my work. That is what my work is all about, is getting to the root cause, not using band-aids and helping people to get to a pure state of flow. So their periods are these beautiful openings. Menopause is this beautiful opening instead of being these difficult, problematic experiences. So then as a woman, part of doing that is getting to know your own monthly cycle and rhythms. Did you know that you can only get pregnant during about one week of every month and that your body tells you exactly when that week is? You can learn how to observe and chart your own fertility signs and you can be your own method of birth control. And guess what? It's 100% free. And that's why I find it amusing to call, see these so-called feminists fighting for the right to get breast 
cancer and subsidized chemical castration. Seriously, you can do it yourself. And it's insane if you think that you can't. And look, I even, I remember years ago going when I went to see a doctor about something and she's like, oh, what kind of birth control do you use? And I'm like, oh, I told her like this natural, you know, fertility observation stuff. She's like, oh, that doesn't work. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, you dumbass? Of course it does. It's like 99 point whatever plus percent effective. So, I mean, I guess they're just brainwashed or because they've got like their whole drawer full of pharmaceutical kickback medicine that they are trying to apply on you because they get commission off of it, you know, that they're just not willing to allow you to do anything that is in your own power and is free. You know, that goes against their whole doctrine, right? Is that you can't do this yourself. You need me to do it for you. You are not in in charge of your own body. I'm in charge of it for you. So look, I get why you could have taken in these ideas over over the years, but I'm telling you that there are other ways. There are millions of women all over the world who use these self-assessment methods for their contraception and conception. So again, why are they not more widely promoted? Because they're free. So they're especially used in third world countries where they don't have the money to do these things. Like in China, these things are official methods of birth control. Um, where they don't have the money and they they want to actually (laughs) prevent, you know, a certain level of population growth because it's maybe already getting what they consider to be out of control. So, um, you know, like I said, it's not in line with this whole OBGYN doctrine to give you your power back. But in doing so and getting to know your own cycles, you can share this information, not just have it for yourself, but you can share the experience and the observations with your partner. And this can be something that's a collective exercise rather than this burden that's exclusively yours. Like you as the woman generally are the person who has to take care of birth control. In this situation, like you can even chart, you know, through an app or a wall chart explaining what your signs are and talk to each other about it and your partner gets a real sense then of your rhythms as you go through the month as well. So the fact that so many women need abortions says something about how lacking proper sex and self-education is. I get that accidents can happen, but I wager to guess that the majority of unplanned pregnancies happen more through ignorance than through accidents. So let's get conscious about our conception and our contraceptions. Then I talk about all of these techniques in, I think, every one of my salons. So if you believe that you need pap smears or you have gynecological issues that you want to address, consider midwives, naturopaths, and holistic pelvic care practitioners. Like I said, I don't believe in pap smears, so I don't get them. I haven't had one in at least 10 years, and it's just reinforcing the idea that you don't know, and somebody else has to literally force you open and scrape your insides to tell you your own truth. So look, I say all this also with the caveat that I am very healthy, and I take very good care of my myself and I'm very in touch with my body. But that's my point. You can be too. And yes, I've been at this for 30 years, meaning taking responsibility for my own health and wellness and, you know, really making that a priority in my life. That's been a priority for the last 30 years. I was on the birth control pill for only two years early in my sexual history, and then I went off of it, and I've never taken any kind of hormonal contraceptive since. And I learned natural fertility slash birth control in my early 20s, and that's been the way of it ever since. I don't believe that any doctor knows my body better than I do, but this belief comes out of decades of experience. So wherever you are at on the spectrum, if you're in the midst of dealing with any kind of reproductive ailments, consider the alternative options I've suggested and start to make these choices. Like you don't have to jump full throttle into everything, but you can start to explore other options and every step that you take will bring you back into alignment with yourself and back into alignment with your own power. So the last thing I wanted to mention was plant power. So there are plant remedies for everything under the sun. And this has historically been our medicine for everything from PMS to erectile issues, menopause symptoms, difficult periods, even the eradication of growths on the reproductive organs. It's all there. It's basically free as this incredible loving gift from the earth. And you, I mean, you may know this, but most pharmaceutical medicines are have their replicated 
complicated from the molecular structures of plants. And so people go out foraging in the Amazon. They actually go diving into coral reefs to find molecular structures that they then copy and replicate in labs. And the only reason we have pharmaceutical medicine and not plant herbal medicine is because you can patent pharmaceutical medicine. You can't patent a plant. So what they've done is they steal information from the plant. They make a pharmaceutical artificial, you know, replica of it. But the problem is that the plant itself gives you all of this holistic whole information that they extract in pharmaceutical medicine. And so it becomes this very imbalanced way of taking one particular compound rather than the entire healing properties of the whole plant that's giving you all of its medicine and, you know, integrating that into your system in a very holistic way. So, you know, there are even, there's plenty of scientific studies about the efficacy of plant medicine. Like I said, the reason that it's not widespread or that you see allopathic people condemning it is it's a threat to them. And so they've even been brainwashed, you know, in their education that you wouldn't even go there. You only look at pharmaceuticals for whatever you would prescribe to patients. And it's only when people make a concerted effort to look elsewhere, you know, people who are functional medicine doctors or naturopaths or herbalists or midwives, that there's all of these other remedies and approaches that are just as effective, if not more effective, because they don't have those dangerous side effects. They're not addictive. They're not dangerous. Like the people, <laughs> people don't die from herbs. And the great irony here is that one of the leading causes of death every year in America is iatrogenic medicine, meaning people die from taking pharmaceuticals, like either wrongly prescribed or through the side effects of having them. It's in the hundreds of thousands, like something like 800,000 people a year, it's very high. So, you know, when we're talking about safety, plants are the shit. And, you know, there's a beautiful harmony in getting in touch with the plant world. And that's been a major medical source for me in the last 30 years. I started learning about studying about plants when I was about 18. And that's basically my medicine cabinet is plants. I don't use, I don't even have Tylenol in the house. Like I, you know, I can't even remember the last time that I've used it. I don't use anything like that. I take everything that's plant derived. So let's talk about resources. I've already kind of hinted at it, but naturopaths. So they will work at finding the root cause of any issues that you're having instead of just giving you drug and surgical band-aids. Most of them will. Like they've been granted more prescription powers these days and there might be some naturopaths that lean a little more allopathically, but most of them are on the natural side and then you can even look for ones that you, you know, obviously resonate more or have more of a natural bent. Midwifery, so for pregnancy and birth care and even well woman care outside of pregnancy and birth. And again, here you can have more nurse midwives or more like what I would call radical midwives who are still trained, but they have a much more holistic view on everything. And then natural fertility. So all of this is based on the cervical mucus observation and other signs in your body like your temperature and the position of your cervix. All of these things change, they fluctuate throughout your cycle and they give you clear, unmistakable information about when you're fertile. This is not a really hard thing to do. It's actually an easy thing to do. Again, this is just this programming and brainwashing that you might have been taught to believe that this is just something so far outside of your ability. Think of any female animal you've ever seen in estrus, right? So when they're in heat, what do they look like? Their genitals are swollen to high fuck. They're throwing their ass in your face. It's not you can't miss it. <laughs> like it's not missable. So we may not have symptoms or expressions like exactly that obvious, but once you learn them, they're very obvious. And so there's all kinds of natural methods out there, like different, you know, family fertility awareness method, etc. the Billings method. Again, these are things I talk about in my salons and walk you through it, but there's plenty of information out there. So all of that to say is that you have the power. You just need to remember that you have the power and start taking it back. And then, like I said, even though we ought to be fighting to maintain these rights, we, we shouldn't be in a situation where we're so reliant on other people to grant them to us, right? We already ought to have them. And then these are like things like in an emergency, like they have to get done. But otherwise, the bulk of the power resides with you. Sexual accoutrement. Oh, yeah. 
All right, this week's sexual wellness product is the Luscious Crystal Elixir Trinity. So this is out of the collection of Anami Crystal Elixirs that I made myself and downloaded information from my own brain energy source as well as the crystals in the remedy. So Luscious is a trinity, so that means that there are three crystal remedies inside of it and you rotate taking them. Its main purpose is that it helps to clear sexual blockages, including sexual abuse, cervical trauma, and it opens up the cervical orgasm pathway from the cervix via the vagus nerve to the crown chakra. This is our signature healing, block clearing, cultural conditioning, blasting remedy for women. So it contains rhodochrosite, which is known as the self-love and self-confidence crystal, and it's the most effective crystal on the planet for healing issues of sexual abuse. And then there's pink calcite, and it's the excavator of stored trauma so that it goes deep in there, pulls this stuff out of you in the sexual organs, in the emotional body, and it opens and activates the energy of the heart, the cervix, and the vagus nerve. And then it has pearls. So this is all about inhabiting your lustrous beauty. So as women, okay, so this elixir is for women. Actually, I have another one for men, which is called resurrect, but this one is for women. And so it's all about this idea. When women start to really inhabit their sexual energy, they start to get sexual attention. They start to get a lot more attention. And because of these messages that we receive as women that, oh, she was wearing a miniskirt, so she deserved to get raped because she was asking for it, women often start to cover up and obscure their sexuality as they mature because they're afraid or they've actually been attacked. And so they start to, you know, draw this, invert this back into themselves. So Pearl is about when you start to then occupy that space, you own it and you wear it and you take any negative negative experiences just like the grain of sand and the pearl from your life and you turn them into positive wisdom and energy and so it really allows you to inhabit the full scope of your beauty with confidence and radiance. So overall, the dominant message of this podcast today is ask your doctor. Actually, no, ask yourself, right? You know, we hear this in all these pharmaceutical ads that you're, you know, bombarded with. Well, ask your doctor about sort of, no, 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 don't ask your doctor, ask yourself. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, subscribe and also leave a review and send someone else the gift of a healthy libido and an off the charts love life by sharing this episode with them. We'll be back next week. And in the meantime, many happy orgasms.